Hey yo, thanks for tuning in to The Source, your source for celebrity news. Check this out. We're going to kick off today's show with the question of the day. And the question is this. Would you ever rock the boat and date your friend's ex-boyfriend or girlfriend? Let me know in the comments. And while you're down there leaving a comment, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Now, the reason why this has come up is because in the midst of all the P. Diddy drama, a whole lot of stuff from like the 90s is resurfacing. And one particular YouTuber is not only calling out Jay-Z for dating Aaliyah, but he's also calling out Jay-Z for making raunchy songs with Foxy Brown when she was under 18. Check this out. If Jay-Z was born in 69, how old was he in 96? Can anybody give me the answer, please? My math is not that good. Um, so I need your help. I need your help. 1969. Uh, uh, December the 4th, 1969. So if he was born in 69, how old was he in 96? 27 years old. Now, there was reports that that uh, 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 that people witnessed him pulling up to the school to pick up Foxy Brown. Uh, th th there was reports that Jay Z will go to the high school and pick up Foxy Brown. Family, can you imagine a 27 year old man? Calling a 15-year-old girl Il Nana. Do you know what Il Nana is? That's talking about her private parts. She's saying that she has the best private parts at the age of 15. Now, 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 now see, we we different than the rest of these channels. We're gonna give perspective and paint, paint the picture. Can you imagine? Can you imagine your daughter, 15 years old, running around with a guy that gives her or uses the name of El Nana? Why, why haven't nobody held a, a Jay-Z accountable? We know, we know that, that Jay-Z and Puff, you know that Jay-Z and Puff, they've been, they've been real tight for quite some time. Now, let's, let's, let's look at this real quick. Let's look at this real quick. I'm a, all right, I want to share this with y'all before I move on. Because, you know, Beyonce, Beyonce uh, uh, is said to be was to be 16 when she met G I don't understand this I don't understand this at all yeah let's look at this I don't understand this at all let's look at this time Jay Z and Foxy Brown relationship began in the 90s Jay-Z and Foxy Brown relationship in the 90s began after a 14 or 15 year old Foxy Brown was included in LL Cool J's I Shot Ya remix. Afterwards, Brown was featured on multiple tracks by major artists at the time, though perhaps none greater than her frequent collaborator, co-writer Jay-Z, the first major duet Ain't no N word like the one I got. Was featured on the soundtrack for Eddie Murphy movie, The Nutty Professor, released in 1996. However, the song itself was recorded in 1994. Brown was born September the 16th, 1978, putting her age at 14 or 15 during the recording of the song. But just think about it though. What 27 year old man go and sit in the parking lot of a high school, but then bring a young sister into a studio and ready to record with grown men 
engineering, grown men making beats, grown men writing, ad lipping, and grown women doing the same. Family, you, you can't tell me we ain't messed up. And now, and, and, and you know, I, again, I'm guilty of it too. You know what I mean? I did not have a clue. But hey, I wasn't there when the song was being recorded. Hey, I wasn't in a uh, hone in to a grown man, 27, talking about a 17 year old or 15 year old got an ill nana. Grip say, Foxy look about 10 years older than she was. Not that that's an excuse, but she look old though. She don't look old coming out of a high school. So when the people start crying that somebody is chasing black men in the they they because they rich and they powerful uh 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 remember when they was dominating high school students before they start crying about that stuff I mean remember that remember that because listen this is a high school child here now the reports about Jay-Z pulling up to the school actually came from her friends if I'm not mistaken one of her friends uh, 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 I think it's right here. Is this it? it? This may not be it, but let me see. Oh, yeah, here we go. It says Foxy Brown was with Jay Z, but it was down low. But many NYC people back then knew the deal. He used to pick her up when she went to high school. She went to my school, John Dewey, then BCA. Then Westinghouse night classes. He used to pull up to Westinghouse for her. Biggie definitely used to pick her up too, but they were legit friends. Everybody knew her and Jay were together. Wendy Williams said 70 times, several times, that she knew for a fact that they had something. Family, you talking about a 20 You talking about a 27-year-old man pulling up to a high school? Listen, I appreciate this dude's commentary and bringing this information to the forefront because a lot of times we overlook Jay-Z because of his current status in hip-hop and we give him a pass. But when you really do think about it, Jay-Z was a grown-behind 27-year-old man who had a 14, 15-year-old girl in the studio talking about how good her ill nana is. Could you just imagine if Kanye West called up Jay-Z and Beyonce and was like, yo, I need Blue Ivy to come to the studio and drop a verse on this song where we're talking about how good her ill nana is. Jay-Z and Beyonce would be like, hell no, MFA, what the hell is wrong with you? And the reason why they would say that is because they both know how inappropriate it is to have a 14, 15 year old in a studio talking about the cooch. I mean, real talk. Could you imagine Jay-Z allowing his own daughter to go up in the studio talking about ain't no ninja like the one I got. No one can F you better. Ha ha. Ha ha. <laughs> yeah, okay. But anyway, on top of the fact that Jay-Z had Foxy Brown in the studio saying all types of age inappropriate things, that might have been the least of it. Because if you remember, Wendy Williams often said that these two may have had an inappropriate relationship. Check this out. All right, now Wendy Williams is talking about the Foxy Brown book and she's spilling some tea that we don't know is really true. Now my girl Kim Osario is writing Foxy Brown's memoir. Shout out to and Kim. Can't wait to read it. Yes. Mm -hmm. That memoir is coming out in December. Here is what Wendy Williams said. I remember when Foxy and Jay-Z had... Um, I'll be. Yeah, I'll be. that was a good one. Okay, Foxy was the star of that. Jay-Z was standing in the corner, wringing his hands, talking about, okay, all right, what do I do next? And then, you know, this was allegedly a romantical thing. It's, it's all right, I'll say alleged, but we know, we know. Yeah, she hit it before Beyonce. <laughs> allegedly. You can't, yeah, oh, she added the allegedly. I was like, you cannot just say that. Yeah, you can't make, you can't, not, not unless you was dead and you saw for yourself. If not, you got to say allegedly because, you know, that's, that's defamation. I don't know if it's defamation, but it's, you have to be held liable for that because it's not true. She also well, we said don't some kind of nasty things. Source, don't give me the secondary source. Give me the primary source when Wendy Williams asked Foxy Brown directly if she was sleeping with Jay-Z. Different role with Puffy than there was with Hova. I love Jay, and I'm not. I I I, I wanted. I want to say that too. And I just spoke to Jay this morning. How is the sex? Is he hung like a horse? Oh my god! 
That's an artist. She's, un- she's unbelievable. Is he? Jay is one. Let me tell you something. No one can do what Jay and I do. Like, re- for, for real. Like, and I really, I, if I have to say, out of any artist, entertainer in this industry that I have genuine love for, like, real, 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 die hard love for, yeah. it's Jay. For real. You're strong. That was strong. her first. <laughs> Art, you think um, she and Jay Bond? You don't have to acknowledge it, Foxy. Just Art. You th- maybe some foreplay. Oh, no, maybe a what? Me. Some foreplay. Bonification boning. Maybe foreplay. So I look like I. His just mouth. Do his mouth has been on your b- before. Is what Art is saying. Oh yeah, you think that? Yeah, I think a you lot have to remember. Go- I'm a lot younger. Than exactly. Than- and so is Beyonce. He likes him younger. <laughs> Listen, as you can see, Foxy Brown did not confirm nor deny whether or not she was stuck in Jay before he got with Bay. However, I do find it weird that when Wendy Williams asked her whether or not she was sleeping with Jay-Z, her response was, nobody does it like me and Jay do. I mean, for real, if somebody asked me whether I was having an inappropriate relationship with somebody, I'd be like, hell no. I wouldn't be like, nobody does it like he do. (laughs) So to me, that's very telling. Anyhow, after the dude on Moorish World TV got finished talking about Foxy and Jay-Z, he also started talking about Jay-Z and Aaliyah. Check this out. You know the most weirdest connection that I see with Jay-Z? The connection of Aaliyah and Jay-Z. The crazy thing about this is that many people think talk about the beef between Dame Dash and Jay-Z that Jay-Z and Dame Dash um, they couldn't get along because Jay wanted to move better and and, and Dame wanted to party but the weird thing about it is how to two record execs how to two record execs ultimately be with the same person how do two friends do this how does this work I don't know, because where I'm from, like, we wouldn't even talk to our homeboy sisters. Where I come from, we didn't even talk to our homeboy sisters. We had to go to, I mean, it was just an unwritten code that we would go to another, we would just go to to the next neighborhood for the most part. Now, when we got older, some of us reacquainted with one another and something like that. But growing up, we didn't do stuff like this. But these guys are grown men. And this is a child. Not only that, right? Not only that. That they knew that she had been formally married to R. Kelly. You know what I mean? They knew that she was formally married to R. Kelly. As a child. You know, they get the news before us. They get the news before us. Kelly was accused of bribing an Illinois... Listen to this, family. This this goes back to Jay-Z, though. Kelly was accused of bribing an Illinois government employee on August 30th, 1994, so he could obtain a fake ID for the late singer who died in 2001. The fake ID, which claimed her age was 18, was then used to obtain a marriage license. So a then 27, 27 again, 27-year-old Kelly could wed the singer. Who full name was Aaliyah Dana Hutton, named as Jane Doe on the federal indictments. Well, I see people saying that she was a pass around. Family, she was a child. Now, I don't believe that Aaliyah was a pass around. God rest the dead. And she was also of age by the time she started dating Jay and like Dame. But I always found it strange that Jay-Z and Dame Dash had no problems dating the same chick. And on top of that, I also found it very troubling that Jay-Z would turn around and do the Best of Both Worlds album with R. Kelly after he knew that this grimy dude took advantage of Aaliyah when she had less than 18 candles on a birthday cake. But it just goes to show you that these dudes don't care, especially when they're over there trying to get their rocks off. But that does bring me back to the original question. 
which was, would you date your friend's ex-boyfriend or your friend's ex-girlfriend? See, where I'm from, you never date your friend's ex. They're strictly off limits, you don't touch them. But nowadays, I mean, you got P. Diddy dating his son's ex-girlfriend, Lori Harvey. You got all of these rappers who share the same baby's mamas. I mean, what's going on out there? Have the rules changed? Because for me, you never ever take your friend's sloppy seconds. But that's just me. Let me know what you think in the comments. Is it okay to date your friend's ex? And listen, while you're down there leaving a comment, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Because remember, the YouTube algorithm is all about you. And when you hit that like button, it shares this video with more people. And um, we want to share this video with more people. <laughs> now, by now you've all heard the story and you've also seen the footage of the Francis Scott Key Bridge falling in Baltimore after a barge lost power and rammed into one of the main support beams causing the entire bridge to lose its structural integrity and to collapse into the water. As a result of the tragic collision, six construction workers who were working on the bridge lost their lives when they plummeted into the water. And now, people are asking questions as they should, and they want to know how in the world did this happen? Source, can we please see that once again from another angle? Yo! What the f What? What the f No shot! No shot! Gosh! No way in hell I just witnessed that! No way! No way! The key bridge, the Francis Scott Key Bridge just got hit by a cargo ship. Holy what the absolute what the Dude, no way we just watched it. Bro. Yo, shine a light on you. Shine a light on you. What the hell? Bro, that is a monumental moment. That is insane. Okay. Um. Uh, Okay, I know what you're thinking. You're like, why are there two like California Surfer Valley dudes standing in B-more? <laughs> I don't know. Now, as soon as I saw that bridge fall, I was like, oh my goodness, what just happened? And then, after I got over the initial shock, I started thinking back to when I was in high school and they made us do that assignment where they made us build our own bridges with a hot glue gun and some popsicle sticks. Do you guys remember that darn assignment? And then after you finished your bridge, they put some weights on it. And if your bridge didn't hold enough weight, you failed. Well, based on my expertise in bridge building, solely based on that assignment in which I got an A+, because I had like mad trusses with like the popsicle sticks. I was like, a bridge is not supposed to fall that easily. Where's the redundancy? So then I called my friend who lives in Beemore and I was like, yo, do you have a picture of that bridge before it fell? And this is what they sent me. Yo, this darn bridge looks like it would have collapsed even if a boat didn't hit it. I mean, this bridge looks like it would have collapsed if like a pigeon landed on it the wrong way. Listen, our government has got to do better. Our tax dollars need to be used to build the infrastructure that we need to get things done. I mean, we should be able to like drive across a bridge safely. So instead of like the government sending all of our tax dollars over there to fund wars that we don't really have anything to do with, how about we use our tax dollars to save lives instead of like causing deaths? We need to update and reinforce our own infrastructure before we go all the way overseas to be worrying about what everybody else is doing. How daylight I so say it, we got our own potholes in our lawn. And here we go, going over there to mow everybody else's lawn. And trust me, I get it. Foreign policy is very important. And we need to have very good relationships with other countries in order to protect our own borders. But at the same time, like they say, how in the world you gonna save somebody else when you can't even save yourself? I mean, really, our priorities are so screwed up. Because how in the world are we spending billions of dollars to try to like go to the moon 
but we got dilapidated bridges and like broken roads. And the craziest thing about it is that the same amount of millions that they're going to end up spending to pay off the families of the people whose lives were lost on that bridge, along with rebuilding that bridge from scratch, is actually going to come out to more than if they just would have went ahead and shored up that bridge in the first place. Listen, let me know two things. One, do you want more of your tax dollars going to fund foreign wars or shoring up our own infrastructure? And two, what grade did you get on that bridge assignment in high school? Was your bridge able to stand up to the pressure and hold the weight of all those old dusty textbooks that they put on top of it? Or did your bridge collapse with the quickness? <laughs> <laughs> Let me know in the comments. Now, peep this. Cardi B jumped on social media the other day with a serious PSA. And Cardi B says, y'all are getting ready to stop calling her Mexican because y'all are not going to erase her nationality. Check this out. Language, we have different uh, dialects. We don't eat the same food. We don't eat the same nothing. Call a, Niger a Nigerian Ghanaian. Call a Haitian, uh, uh, a Haitian Jamaican. Call a Jamaican a Haitian. Call, Ga call, call Guyanese a Trini. And you told me how they're gonna feel. You told me how they're gonna feel. And not only do y'all and, 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 and stop playing with me, cause y'all know that I'm not Mexican. And y'all do that for y'all do that to to thing to irritate me. And not only do y'all don't call me a Mexican, y'all call me a dirty Mexican. So of course I'm gonna defend myself every single time you guys do it. You're not gonna keep erasing my nationalities. You're not gonna keep erasing how I am. And I first of all, I, I, never in my life growing up did I ever heard anybody call me a Mexican. So it's like how. Well, when I was coming up, y'all wasn't calling me that, but now y'all do call me that. So it's like, yeah, I'm gonna say something about it because it's like, that's not my nationality. That's not what I am. Respect my Like, yeah, everybody wants to get their respected. Stop doing that. I wish I, wish I was again so I could have the cartel chop y'all fingers off whenever I want to. I, honey, if I was Mexican, you know the poor I would everything in Jalisco, honey. You my be chopped up in a river y'all lucky i ain't mexican yeah come on out from yeah yeah put me put me the cowboy hat right now say put me the cowboy hat right now come on out from put it again put it again put it go on by get it by this i'm all right yeah, compa, que le parece esa mora? Compa, que le parece esa mora? Compa, que le parece esa mora? Hey, baby. <laughs> compa, que le parece esa mora? Compa, que le parece esa mora? Okay, okay, babe, stop. Stop, stop. Stop. <laughs> Honestly, Cardi's right. Every Hispanic person is not Mexican and every Asian person is not Chinese. You go out there and you call a Jamaican man a Haitian and vice versa and see what happens. You might get slapped upside the head with a beef patty and some cocoa bread. And aside from that, why would anybody think that it's okay to refer to somebody as a dirty Mexican? That's just not right and it's mad disrespectful, not only to Cardi, but to all Mexicans. I mean, come on people. We have to start being more respectful to people than nationalities, their ethnicities, and their cultures. And what Cardi B might want to keep in mind is that when you're trying to make that point, you might not want to turn around and start using negative Mexican stereotypes to make your point. I wish I, wish I was Mexican so I could have the cartel chop your fingers off when I want to. Oh my goodness, Cardi's off the hook. Anyhow, the other day, um, Stephen A. Smith came out and he made a comment about Diddy's baby's mama coming out and saying that the feds used excessive force against her sons. And now, Benzino is criticizing Stephen A. Smith because he says, listen, you don't need to be giving your opinion on anything outside of sports. Check this out. Notice that lately Stephen's been trying to give his opinion on things outside of sports. Um... I seen uh, Diddy's baby mother made a comment about her son being arrested. And then here comes Stephen A with his opinion about her son being arrested. Stephen A. Stephen A. This is this woman's son and some things, your opinion just doesn't matter. Sometimes you should just STFU, okay? 
And that's why, coming real soon, it's going to be the STFU Benzino show. Because a lot of these need to STFU. And I'm about to call out all of them. My show, I'm going to keep everybody in check for the that they be talking about. All right, so let me get this straight. What Benzino just said is that Stephen A. Smith should keep his opinions to himself. And what he's going to do is he's going to start his own show where he shares his opinions about other people's opinions because he feels that they shouldn't be out here giving opinions. Did I get that right? <laughs> wow. Listen, let me know what you think about Benzino saying that Stephen A. Smith needs to shut the cuff up and keep his opinions focused on sports. Follow the bouncing ball, watch it go through the net, make a quick comment, and that's it. No more talking for you. <laughs> now, check this out. The other day, country artist Lily Allen jumped on a podcast and criticized Beyonce's new country album, Cowboy Carter. Lily said that the album was very calculated and that Beyonce's version of the songs that she chose to cover, like Jolene, were extremely underwhelming. I don't think the Jolene one's good. It's very weird that you cover the most successful songs in that genre. But I also feel like Jolene's such an excellent song. Like, I've listened to the story of how Dolly Parton wrote it in about 20 minutes, like, over and over, because I just think it's so genius. And I don't know, it just felt a little bit like a, a kind of uh, standard hip-hop beat under a, a Jolene cover. It's like, let's do, let's do something with this song. If we're going to take it apart and put it back together, I feel like Beyonce could have done a bit more with it. Or maybe picked something that was a little less bait to cover. Yeah, I just feel like it's quite an interesting thing to do when you're like trying to tackle a new genre and you just choose the biggest song in that genre to, <laughs> to cover i mean you do you beyonce and she literally is doing her or is she doing dolly i think i'd like it a lot more if it wasn't like this is beyonce's country album listen i just think that people are hating on beyonce to hate on beyonce at this point because i listened to the album and the album was actually very good i mean it wasn't like the most amazing album you ever heard but it was very good and beyonce did a thing i mean and honestly nobody expected beyonce to do dolly parton better than dolly parton I mean, that's just an unrealistic expectation because there are certain things that you're not making over better than the original. For example, you're not remaking any Prince songs better than Prince made them in the first place. And you're certainly not remaking any Michael Jackson songs better than Mike did it when he originally went into the studio. But with that being said, Beyonce did a real good job, especially on that song Spaghetti. Because when I was in the car and that song came on, I was like, how in the world is Beyonce over here spitting bars better than like the professional female rappers like Lorilla Cardi and Ice Spice? I was like, oh shucks, they need to be ashamed of themselves. <laughs> how you gonna let Beyonce spit a flow and go harder than you? <laughs> I mean, I get that like Jay-Z was probably like right there coaching her while she was standing at the microphone, but yet and still, some of these female rappers should be ashamed of themselves for allowing Beyonce to sun them like that. <laughs> now, really quick, I gotta mention this. The other day, in the midst of all of these scandals that are going on, P. Diddy jumped back online and he jumped on Instagram and posted the throwback video to Victory. You know the one where he's running from the cops? And under the video, P. Diddy wrote, Bad boy for life. Yo, is this dude serious right now? And who's his PR team? I mean, you got him out here riding on bicycles, going to pick up cookies for like Stephen J, dancing alone on bridges. Yo, Source, can you please show the clip? of him dancing on the bridge. <laughs> Look, P. Diddy can try to put on a good show for the cameras if he wants to, but we all know that that ninja's over there feeling the pressure. Because when you go down to the docks, roll up a black and mile, and start smoking, and then you start dancing like you're Kevin Bacon doing a scene from Footloose, you know darn well that a ninja's stressed out. <laughs> Listen, let me know what you think about Jay-Z being called out for going down to the high school to pick up Foxy Brown, a.k.a. the Il Nana. Wendy Williams saying that Foxy and Jay-Z definitely hooked up before he married Bay. Jay-Z and Dame Dash sharing Aaliyah. The Bridge Falling and B-more. Cardi B saying stop calling me a Mexican. Benzino saying Stephen A. Smith needs to shut the cuff up. Lily Allen saying that Beyonce's rendition of Jolene is trash. And Diddy saying that he is a bad boy for life. 
Let me know what you think about all of that in the comments. And while you're down there leaving a comment, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel and share this video with your friends. Hey yo, thanks for tuning in to Celeb Source, your source for celebrity news. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Peace.